This is a photograph of the River Cole running through um, Stitchford in Birmingham. Um, it's a nice little composition. See the, the sort of water how it just it just flows around the bend, and we've got these two dominant trees here on the uh, edges of the banks. So I'll have a go at this and see how I get on. We have a look at the uh, materials first before I start the painting. This is my usual part. It always have in the same order, so I know exactly. I know instinctively where everything is. I ain't going to mess about looking for the colours. Plus, there's only seven anyway, so it's it's not hard to find. I mean, we've got ultramarine, lemon yellow, Payne's grey, glycerin crimson, raw sienna, burnt umber, light red. Underneath there, we've got the three brushes. We've got a three-quarter inch flat, a large run round snake, and a number three rigger. We've got the water jar, tissue. Should I need it, lifting off the uh, colour and whatnot. Got the uh, towel here I use to take the excess water off because those hikes hold uh, quite a lot. And I've got 15 by 11 Fabriano watercolour paper. It weighs 130 pounds, and I'll just clip it to a piece of plywood, leaning against the easel. It's virtually upright, almost 90 degrees. For no other reason than it's it's easier to to video it really. So I'm going to start off with clear water, giving the paper a good soaking all over. Main benefit being it'll stretch evenly, so I won't got to worry about the uh, cockling and I'm um, working with a flat surface all the time. <clears throat> Plus anything in the background in the or the distance sort of. Sort of blend, blends in and goes nice and soft, no hard edges. So, first colour is raw sienna, it's a little bit dirty, but I'm not too worried about that. A bit more, see how that's a little bit cleaner. That's the raw sienna in, clean the brush, and now I'm going ultramarine. Just ultramarine on its own, and then just brushing it in from the from right to left. Well, if, if you're left-handed, you probably want to go from left to right. It doesn't really make any difference. No one can tell you what the sky is looking at, and looking like at any one particular time. It's constantly changing. So I'm going straight into those same two colours. And I'm going to put in some background trees, about two thirds of the way up the horizon. There are some blocks of flats, but I'm not going to bother with those ugly things. So, a little bit bigger there. I don't want these to be too well defined. That'll do for that. So in front of those, I've, there's a bit of grass, so I'm not going to clean the brush, in fact I'm just going to take a bit more of those two colours, but then go into a bit of lemon yellow. And this is a, uh, it's um, I think it was one uh, sort of winter, sort of this, it looks like a very sort of frosty, frosty surface, so I'm not going to put too much in. I'm just going to leave it at that, I think. And then, again, I haven't cleaned the brush, so I'm giving burnt umber, a bit of ultramarine. And now it's getting a bit. a bit sort of dark, isn't it? And a bit. These sort of bushes with no leaves in the background. Just scraping a few little, few little twigs and branches. And there's another one just down there. Right now, I'm going to put in the uh, the big one here on the. Um, no, I'm not. I'm going to move over to the. Uh, yes, I am. 
staying on the left hand side now we've got the big the big foreground tree there's two two, two uh, big uh, trunks going up we've got one on this side you can use a rigger to do this I find it a lot of just easy to use the uh, use the hike and there's a few little dips and dabs in the background And then on the left hand side of that, there's another big one that goes right off onto the le over to the left, a bit more up there. Just bring that down in front of that slightly. And then we'll switch to the um, switch to the rigger and just put a few more. Few more limbs on it and a few uh, few background bushes and stuff and all this. Right, cleaning the brush now. The brush is quite muddy, so I'm cleaning it back to a light colour. I'm just going raw sienna. Now down to the uh, the bank, the river bank. It's quite frosty. You can imagine these little, just leaving little bits of white unpainted paper, just gives that sort of little frosty or bits of snow. And then. Below the grass we've got the bank so it switches to a darker darker brownie muddy colour. Right then, so that's the left hand side. Now I'm going to switch back to the right. And there's before I go any further, you see the paper stretch now, so I'm just going to pull it tight so we've got a flat surface to work with again. All these clips come in handy, nice and simple to fix them to the paper, and you've got that flat surface. So I've got raw sienna and light red on the brush, and it's going to be a quick sweep like that. Now the river sort of starts right over here, so if I bring that right the way down. And then, now these ones are further away now, so I think I'm going to use the rigger on these uh, tree trunks. So, whoop, plenty of water, give it a twist around to get it all loaded on the brush, and then just hold it right at the very end so you, have, you don't want it to be too controlled like you're holding a pen. Just hold it at the end of the, uh, the brush so you get some nice random strokes, and then just like I say, plenty of water, plenty of water, give it a twist, twist it around, load it up nice and good, and then just flick up. in the background. That'll do. And then we've got just a muddy shore down there. And then it sort of comes down something like that. So, 
All right, now what I need to do is put the reflections in. So first I'm going to make sure that that is all dry. Okay, give it a flip. So now that's dry, I can re-wet that now. Confident that I'm not going to spread the paint all over the place. So I'm doing clean brush, just clean water, and then I'm going to wet, just wet all this water area. Wet it enough so it's going to take a, you know, a couple of minutes to dry. And make sure it is the paint. Make sure the paint's dry as well before you start doing that. Otherwise, it'll look uh, a tad untidy. And then we just start just pulling down all sorts of reflections. And then some on this side. And then the big, the big trunky ones. They don't have to be exact. As long as they're there or thereabouts, you'll get away with it. Use the rigger for these ones. And like I say, they don't have to be bang on, but as long as they're sort of there. Roughly. You'll get a, you'll get away with it. Just dark mix and just strengthen those river banks a little bit. Just make those nice and dark. Sure, that's dry. brambles and twigs and stuff there in the foreground just flicking out over into the water mm. just using the rigging now just to just generally I don't know what you'd call it I think that trunk will just do with being a bit darker. The tone's not quite not quite there. So if I just darken that up a little bit.
and the one behind it. See the beauty of this like how quickly you can cover the piper. If I was doing this with the rigger it would be there for a, a lot longer. This looks a bit better, a bit darker. Back to the um make a sort of sort of shadowy colour. Light red. Ultramarine. A sort of shadowy colour and then a sort of don't wanna done this a little bit too a little bit too dark but Try and get away with it. Back to the number three rigger, and we'll just take a couple of birds, a couple of birds in the trees, one over there. Another big one down there. And then in the corner, stick your signature. Remember, not right in the corner because you wouldn't see once you've mounted it or framed it or whatever it is you want to do with your painting. And I think I'll call that one finished. So, if we have another look at the uh, photograph I was working from, we've tried, you can see how I've Try to keep that sort of bend in the river. And we've got the predominant tree here on the left and there's another smaller one on the right hand side. I haven't bothered with the blocks of flats, a bit unsightly really. I haven't changed. I've I've left a lot of a lot out in the background. The sort of background's a lot more open than what it actually is in the uh, photograph. Like I say, you haven't got these blocks of flats out here. I suppose it the scene looks nicer in the painting than, than what it does on the actual uh, from real life. But you can see putting the reflections in the water just helps the water make more realistic. Um, very simple sky using the uh, same colours as the sky, just in this instance ultramarine and raw sienna helps push these uh, distant trees right back, and then. Obviously the stronger tones in the foreground help bring these forward and push with the rest of us recede. Our little birds help bring a sort of element of life to the thing. Now you can see that the, the advantage of this to the hike is you know big tree trunks like this can be put in very very quickly and simply. And you've got a few scrapes with a fingernail and then using the rigger just to help put in the rest of the foreground brambles and twigs. Well I hope you like that. Thanks for watching. Keep practicing and I'll see you again soon.